Hey, good morning, everyone. Great to see y'all here today. Thank you for being here. Please rise. Let's begin worship together. wasn't ready for y'all to finish, Grant. That was <laughs> wonderful. Aren't they good? Aren't we blessed? Yeah. Uh, both services, we are, are blessed with excellent music. And it's not just pretty music, it's spirited music. It comes from the heart, and it's, it's obvious, and we, we thank y'all for that. So good to see everybody today. It's been a few weeks, it feels, since I was uh, in this service with you guys, and, and always a, a joy and a pleasure to uh, to worship with you. Let us remember our mission of seeking to follow Jesus and share him with others. And, and God truly wants us to be the, the presence of, of Christ, the, the body of Christ in Myrtle Beach and, and in the world to reveal his goodness, his love, his forgiveness, his truthfulness with others. And so I pray that by the way we conduct ourselves as individuals and as a church family, that we give those messages uh, to the world and to our community. Uh, remember, our monthly mission for March is the college ministry team. Um, and so we want to remember our college students and, and pray for them and, and remember them. We also want to extend sympathy to the, the family of, of Jim Wood. His funeral service is going to be tomorrow here at the sanctuary 
at 2 p.m. and the visitation is going to follow in the sanctuary immediately after that. So please keep Lynn and, and their family in your prayers. Today, uh, we welcome anybody that's interested in finding out more about our church family or, or, or interested in officially joining the church to join us for pizza with the pastors. It's going to be today, immediately uh, following worship and next Sunday. And we have like 21 people signed up for that. And so we had to not meet in the parlor as we have been. We're meeting in the 925. And if you want to go there and aren't sure how to get to the 925, wait on me. I'll be headed there uh, right after the service. So I will be glad to, to walk with you there. Um, so, so excited. We, we brought in about 20 new members at the, be at the beginning of this year, the end of last year, and we have another 20 or so that are expressing interest. And so we're just thankful for what God seems to be doing through us, and, and we want to give him honor and glory for that and, and keep going uh, in this good direction. Uh, for our ladies, I want to remind you of a potluck fellowship meal coming up. Please definitely read through the, the rest of the bulletin. We have our, our, our Bible reading plan there, and several people have commented on the fact that they're keeping up with those readings, and we're grateful for that. The snowbirds and seagulls are, are in full effect. They are having a, a great time and have great attendance. There's a barbecue fundraiser coming up, and the, the Presbyterian ladies are inviting our ladies to spring surge. There's some information about that. Coming up on Monday, Thursday, that's the Thursday before Easter, we're going to have a reenactment of the Last Supper. We're calling it the Living Last Supper. It's something that we haven't done here in quite a while, and we have a good cast of disciples and Jesus who are going to put on a, a great show on Thursday evening, um, March the 28th. And that's going to be at the North Campus. It won't be here. It'll be up in the North Campus. We're trying to use the North Campus a little bit more. There's a, a form to, or some information to order Easter cattle lilies. Those are going to be beautiful. There's some information about the youth activities and, and children's activities. And then the breakfast and uh, Easter egg hunt coming up at, at uh, the North Campus CDM. And so please, please read through the, the rest of the information in the bulletin. We're so proud, so thankful of the things that are going on in the life of our church. And we want you to be a part of it. Are there any other announcements that we need to share? Before I forget, uh, at the end of the service, we're going to have several functions in this room this week, and those of you who are able to stay around for just a, a brief while after the service, we want to move the chairs over to one side and bring out some round tables. And Grant, are you going to be around to help sure. kind of organize that? Okay, so I said it. <laughs> I, I said I was going to say it. <laughs> and I'm going to go help Pastor Michelle teach the new members class, but not dumping that on you. Just want to make sure somebody was, was we'll, in charge. We'll for you to take your microphone off. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, let us briefly stand and welcome one another and pass the peace and love of Christ. And to those who are joining us online, we wish you guys peace and love as well. All right, if y'all will please remain standing, we'll continue worship. Let's sing to the Lord.
right, please be seated. As we dismiss our boys and girls to Children's Church for those that are going, Miss Donna's going to lead you out. They, they, you're used to having a message up here. We're going to have our, our message in class today, so you guys can follow Pastor Donna out, okay? It's great to see you today. And as they're making their way out, we're going to invite our ushers to come forward so that we can offer to God our tithes and our offerings.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Grant, tell us a little bit about our special singer we have on stage. <laughs> this, this is Miss Renisha Smart. <laughs> We're very glad to have Renisha with us. She's been a member for, what, a few years now? And um, where's, where's Mav? He's at Children. Okay, she's got a son, Maverick. He just went to Children's Church. Uh, Maverick goes to CDM. Um, and yeah, we're so glad to have you with us, Renisha. Yes, very, very thankful to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Let us pray. Um, gracious God, we give you thanks for the spirit that is present in this room. Father, we know that that spirit and that joy comes from you. And Lord, we thank you that it's so evident in the songs that we're singing and in the, the expressions on people's faces. And Lord, I do pray that we can... Take, Father, what you're giving us, uh, what you're feeding us, uh, what you're doing in our hearts and in our minds here in this place, and that we take it into the world, Father, to share it with others, to uh, affect good things in the world, that the world would know that you are God and that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. That's the most important things any of us can ever realize is that you are God and that your son Jesus is our Savior and Lord. He, he lived a perfect life. He offered his life on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins because there's no way we could redeem ourselves. And we thank you, Jesus, for offering yourself in that way. And God, we thank you for honoring his sacrifice and then giving us the benefit of that, the forgiveness of sins, the eternal forgiveness of sins. And we thank you that through faith in what Jesus has done and through faith that you raised him from the dead, then we can be saved. Not by what we've done, but by what Jesus has done for us. That is our hope. That is our salvation. And so God, thank you that we can be saved through believing in Jesus and through that faith, through gratitude, Father, for what you have done for us. And we live for your glory. We live for your purposes. We live for the opportunity to share what you've done for us with others so that they can know you're a good God too. That they can know that Jesus is Savior and Lord. So Father, please use us. Have your way with us. Please strengthen us for your purposes, Father, and may we uh, desire, Lord, to do your will with our lives. And Father, you know the, the places in our lives that need forgiveness. You know that the places in our lives that are broken and need healing. You know what's not right within us. And Lord, may we agree with you. May we accept, Father, your truth. And may we submit to you. May we repent of our sins. And may we turn to you for forgiveness and guidance for a better way. And as we do so, Father, may that be a, a testimony and an example to others. Father, please bless the future of, of this church. Father, may we get on board with you. May we do your will. May we accomplish your purposes. And Father, may we uh, take joy in, in, in seeking to accomplish your purposes. And Father, for just a few moments, we're going to pause and, and entrust to you our prayers and concerns. Thank you, Father, for being available to us. Thank you for listening, and thank you for responding in your perfect will and in your perfect timing. And it's through Jesus that we offer these prayers to you. And we pray the prayer he taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, again, it's, it's very good to be with you all today. Uh, grateful for this opportunity to worship with you and, uh, and share what I hope is a, a word from the Lord. We're, we're continuing to um, base some of our sermons uh, from the inspiration from this book, The Christian Atheist, written by Pastor Craig Groeschel. He's a pastor out in Oklahoma. And the title is The Christian Atheist, and the subtitle is Believing in God, But Living as If He Doesn't Exist. Believing in God, but living as though he doesn't exist. And so the title of today's message is when you believe in God, but don't think he's fair. Or when you believe in God, but don't think he cares. And that's a major misconception uh, of the Christian faith. And it's, and it's a distorted view of God. And, um, and so I think it's important, even though it's hard to talk about these things, it's important that we talk about them as Christians so that we can share some uh, basic truths with others who may have some doubts or concerns and uh, put some of their uh, concerns about God at ease. And so I, I read a, a, a story that, that we come across you know, you know, fairly often in the church um, uh, about a man who, um, who, who was, was asking the questions, how can you believe in God when, when he doesn't seem to care? Um, and he, he wrote about how he grew up in church. He was raised in the church, went to church his whole life. He married a Christian girl, and they always went to church. They, they had a son, and they wanted a daughter, and uh, instead they had a couple more sons. <laughs> and they finally... Um, Conceived and, and it was going to be a little girl, but unfortunately, their daughter had a severe heart issue, um, and um, uh, she had to have an incredibly high risk surgery uh, in utero. And and they they prayed and they prayed. They went to their pastor and they prayed earnestly for their daughter to be okay. They trusted God and they believed that God would answer their prayers. But their daughter didn't make it through the surgery. And so he was broken and, and, and devastated and, 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 and left wondering, how, how can I believe in a God that, that doesn't seem to care, that would not grant these earnest prayers for the, the well-being of such a precious little life? You know, when our hearts break when we hear stories like this, because they exist much more commonly than, than we would hope, maybe for slightly different situations, but, but the, the, the result is a broken heart and, 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 and doubts sometimes about uh, our relationship with God. You know, how can we believe in, in God who didn't answer such an earnest and well-intentioned prayer? Some of us may have prayed prayers like this, and sometimes our prayers may have been answered the way we wanted them to be. Other times... Not. And when they sometimes are answered and sometimes aren't answered, we're, we're wondering why? why. Why did God seem to respond in this situation but not in this situation? Many Christians through the, the centuries have, have asked this, the same questions. Even characters in the Bible struggled in the same way that, that we, same ways that we do. A lot of times when we think of Biblical characters, we think of them as, as larger than life, the, these superheroes of the faith, but, but really they were ordinary people just like you and me. And, and sometimes they had their own doubts. King David in the Old Testament, when his enemies were pursuing him relentlessly to kill him, he cried out to God in Psalm 13, verses 1 and 2. He says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? You know, <laughs> just an earnest outpouring of his heart before God. Um, in the New Testament, 
we read about John the Baptist. Uh, many of you know John uh, was a cousin of Jesus, and God had called John to prepare the world for Jesus, to be the prophet that would, would get the people ready to receive the Messiah. And so John devoted his life to, to telling people the Messiah is coming. Get ready. Repent of your sins. Be baptized. And, and so people start to listen to John and they, they start to respond. And John is humble. And, uh, he, he, and, and when, when they start to wonder if he's the Messiah, he says, no, someone greater than I am is coming. I'm not even worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandal. He pointed to Jesus and said, he must become greater. I must become less. And um, John continued to stay morally upright. Um, he, uh, he continued to do the right thing, even, even though it might cost him. He, he noticed that the, the ruler Herod was uh, being evil and, and unjust, and so he speaks out against Herod. And, of course, Herod uh, flexes his power and, and has John thrown into prison. You know, and, and it could be while, while John is, is sitting there in, in prison, he's reminding himself, okay, it's going to be okay. Jesus is my cousin. The Messiah is, is my cousin. I've been serving him, and I, I've seen him heal the sick. I know he's raised the dead. He's opened the eyes of the blind. I know that Jesus is going to take care of me. He might, you know, th- th- that's not recorded in the scriptures, but those, those thoughts could have been going through his head. And so John waits in prison, and he waits, and and he waits, and um, he even sends some of his friends, because he's starting to doubt, uh, he's starting to doubt, and he sends some of his friends to ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come, or are we supposed to wait for somebody else, because I'm I'm stuck in prison here, and it's not turning out the way I envisioned this to go. Even John the Baptist had his doubts, and tragically, um, John ended up suffering a very painful death while in prison. And as uh, he saw what was going to be his fate, he may have wondered, why didn't Jesus come for me? Does, does he care about me? Now, we know... <laughs> That Jesus, of course, cared about his cousin, John the Baptist. Jesus loves everyone. That's absolutely true about Jesus. But Jesus did not rescue John. He could have. But he didn't, and, and we're not sure why. Jesus didn't stop the terrible things from happening to his cousin. And you know, sometimes it does seem like God intervenes and miracles do happen, but not always. And none of us can fully explain why, because God's ways are higher than, than our ways. God is infinitely greater than we are. None of us fully knows the mind of God. And even those, uh, you know, with, with a strong, lifelong faith, it's it's, you know, we're, we're prone to the human limits of, of, of doubt when, when painful circumstances happen and we start to wonder why. Um, you know, and, and sometimes just the, the fact of the matter is sometimes we're not going to know the answers to those questions on this side of eternity. Hopefully we'll, God will fill us in a, a little bit later, but we won't always understand. And I'm not sure we're meant to understand everything that God is doing. But we're certainly meant to understand that he, that he is good and that he loves us and that he has provided a savior for us through his son Jesus. And so I want to bring up three actions that I want to point myself and, and you and, and, and others to when difficult times come to, to help us out. Three very simple actions. Some of you could, could name them for me. Number one, when life is tough, the Bible tells us to turn to God. Turn to God, pour out your heart to God, tell God exactly how you're feeling, and ask for his help, ask for his comfort, ask for his guidance. Psalm 46 verse 1 says that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. 
God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. God is present in our struggles and in our pain. And so often we want God to bring us relief or we want God to do this or that, you know, in our our difficulties. But instead, instead of giving us what we ask, God wants to show us that he is what we need. Instead of giving us what we ask, God wants to show us that he is what we need. Jesus reiterates this in, in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. It doesn't say he's going to solve our problems. It doesn't say he's going to take away our pain. He says, Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And sometimes we can't explain it. We may not understand it. But when we turn to God consistently, when we turn to God in faith, when we turn to God to meet God on his terms and not on our own terms, that's very, very important. We've got to turn to God and meet him on his terms because on our terms, we're asking God to give us what we ask. But God wants to show us that he is what we need. And when we turn to God on his terms, we end up finding rest. We end up finding strength. We find refuge in God. And we may not feel it immediately. And our pain may continue. It may not go away fully. It may come and go at times. Our doubts may creep in uh, at times. But when we turn to God and meet God on his terms, we will find that God is there and that his promises are true. And my advice as as your pastor is to seek God now. You know, it's natural to seek God when we're struggling. It's natural to seek God when we're searching for answers or when we're searching uh, for, for comfort. It's not as natural when things seem to be going well. It's not as natural when when we're kind of cruising through life and life isn't very hard. But my advice is to seek God now when times may not be so bad. Develop a healthy relationship with God now, a daily relationship with God now, so that when those difficult times do come, we'll have a closeness with God that will provide a firm foundation on which to stand in those times. So seek God now. Don't wait for calamity to hit. Don't wait for disaster or tragedy to hit. Seek God now. So, number one, turn to God. Number two, count your blessings. Count your blessings. Uh, Even in the midst of tragedy, maybe not in the moment, (laughs) maybe not that very day, we have to allow ourselves some time to grieve and, and, and process and be present in the pain. But we don't want to stay there to the point that it overcomes us and, and affects us in a, in, a, in a very unhealthy way for a long time. After you've had some time to, to process the initial shock and grief and pain, start looking for things that you're grateful for. Start looking for things that you still have. Find a way to be thankful for what you still have in life. It it doesn't disrespect what was lost, but it helps us to remember that that one event isn't everything about life. And and finding reasons to be grateful uh, help us to come through those difficult times. Number three, uh, after some time, find some ways to give back to others. You know, find some ways to focus on the needs of others. I'm not saying the same day, the next day, or, or, you know, when the pain is still raw. But I'm saying after you've had some time to, to process and heal a little, start looking for ways to give back to others, to, to be a source of healing and, and peace in other people's lives. And a lot of folks, they find comfort, they find satisfaction in, in their own peace and healing 
when they seek to, to give of themselves for the sake of others. We, we hear frequently of, of individuals or families who start foundations or, or benefits for uh, others that may be affected the same way they were. You know, they, they found a way to, 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 to work with God to bring something good out of the tragedy that they've faced or, 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 or to bring help and comfort to others who will one day be in their same boat. And so that's another way to, to work with God through our pain and, and through our, our suffering. And if we, if we don't give up, if we press on, if we, if we stick it out with God, then I, I fully believe God can restore us because I've seen it. I've seen it in, 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 in church members who have gone through terrible, awful tragedies. And then years later, through time and through God's grace and healing, through, through the love of a, of a church family and, and friends who support them, that they've found healing and they've found peace and they've even found joy on the other side of terrible, terrible suffering. There's also a, a powerful example uh, in Scripture of the Apostle Paul. Paul comes to faith in Jesus and his life is transformed. He, he used to persecute Christians. He used to, the Bible said he used to breathe out murderous threats against, the, uh, against Christians. But now he, starts to, uh, he is starting to build up the faith that he once sought to destroy. Paul became a great and powerful missionary and evangelist. Uh, he wrote letters that have become the, the biggest portion of the New Testament that we have today. But over the course of his life, uh, Paul developed or maybe always had this health issue. We don't know what it's called, but he names it as a thorn in the flesh. And it's hindering him from, from doing some of the work that he wants to do. Maybe he can't travel as much. Maybe he, can't, he doesn't have the strength to, to speak as much. We don't know what this thorn in the flesh was, but it was causing him anguish and suffering. And Paul says he pleaded with God three times. For God to take it away. He, he pleaded with God earnestly. For God to take away this thorn that was causing him suffering. But he writes what God responded to him in, in 2 Corinthians 12. The beginning of verse 9. But God said to me. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul pleaded to God, please heal me, change my circumstance, fix this problem. But God said, no. My grace is enough. In our pain and in our anguish, we ask God to, to do something for us, but God wants to show us that he is what we need. And it's, it, it's something that we can only experience, and it's, it's hard to even put into words. But God helped the Apostle Paul through that, and, 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 and be, because Paul hung in there with God, he found that God was hanging in there with him, and God continued to use him in, in very powerful ways to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that needed to hear it. And um, Paul continues with the second part of verse 9 and 10. And he says, So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses. God's power is made perfect in weakness. So I'll boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, with insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then... I am strong because Paul had found that God's power was made perfect in the weaknesses of his life. When trouble comes, God wants us to hang in there with him. He wants us to hang in there with him and not give up. And it may be painful, it, it, it may be difficult, it, it, it may not seem like the light at the end of the tunnel is, at the end of the tunnel is ever going to come. But if we hang in there with God and, and truly seek 
his help consistently and meeting and striving to meet him on his terms, we're always going to find that God has been with us the whole way through, for he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, we now have the, the privilege and the honor of being able to participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live at peace with one another. And therefore, we, um, that's okay, We're, I'll call you guys down in, in just a minute. You can stand right here, though. It's fine. Um, so w this is not a United Methodist table. Uh, this, this is uh, not a table for just our church members. Uh, this is what we consider the Lord's table and, um, and all who want a relationship with Jesus Christ are welcome to his table. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May we pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So, Father God, we humbly ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine or juice. Please make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So friends, the bread which we break is a sharing 
in the body of Christ, broken on the cross for our forgiveness and redemption. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ that Jesus gave for you and for me for the forgiveness of our sins. Thanks be to God. Will those who will be assisting with serving communion come forward, please? deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure.
Lord Jesus, we, re- we, we thank you for receiving us as guests at your table. And Lord, we are only worthy to come to your table through your invitation and through your sacrifice on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And we thank you that you want us to be with you. We thank you for what you've done for us. And Lord, please help us to look for ways to share with others your goodness and the the wonderful things that you have done for us so that more people can know who you are and trust in you and have a relationship with you. It's in your precious and powerful and holy name that we pray. Amen. And friends, God bless you and go in peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.